So, why did Omicron emerge that can now infect everyone? Or in other words, why did immune escape happen where now everyone can be infected? So this is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. It's a topic that is not commonly addressed in science. And I will talk about some of the literature that attempts to address this. This is what is referred to as the immune escape. Something that was worrying scientists prior to the emergence of the Omicron. And of course, we did indeed witness the immune escape, meaning that the virus has evolved and it can now escape the immunity, natural immunity post-infection or vaccinal immunity after vaccination. They no longer are protecting us from, from uh, infection. So why did it happen? There are two prevailing theories as to why this has occurred. One of them is more favored than the other. So the favored, the one that is favored is the concept that the reason why immune escape happened is because immunocompromised patients, such as those who have HIV or cancer, have been getting infected. And because they're immunocompromised, they don't have a proper immune system that would help them to be able to effectively fight the infection and as a consequence they can be infected for a very long time and because of that they can then allow the virus to evolve directly inside of them and produce brand new variants that otherwise would not have been there in the first place uh, when they got infected in the first place so that's the prevailing theory number one so that 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 immune escape happened because of evolution of the virus inside immunocompromised patients. Now we're not going to be talking about that in this video, that's a topic of, uh, of another video. Rather, we're going to talk about the theory number two. And this is the theory that is not typically addressed right now. And that's the theory that the reason why immune escape happened is because of vaccines. So. The, this is, would be referred to as vaccine-induced immune escape and this is not a foreign concept apparently it's well understood and has been documented with other vaccinations vaccines as well so this is not completely uh, foreign uh, the articles I will be discussing in today they have provided numerous references that actually that actually help to um, um, provide that the background on how this has been observed in the past so it's well understood that pathogens can indeed evolve due to interventions such as vaccinations. Now, how does it happen or what kind of uh, evolutions do pathogens can undertake because of interventions? Generally, there's two concepts that are, that are believed that happens. Number one, pathogens undergo immune escape. So that means they evolve and they change themselves enough that the antibodies or the t-cells that were previously recognizing them can no longer properly recognize the the same pathogen anymore because the because of the features on the pathogens are slightly different so that's the immune escape and number two and this is more worrisome is that what could happen is that the pathogen could evolve to change its traits so its natural traits specifically uh, especially when it comes to its virulence. So what is virulence? Virulence refers to, determines pathogens pathogenicity, so the likelihood of getting, of causing a disease in an infected person. And virulence basically refers to the growth rate of the virus and how rapidly it can, it can divide and grow. So the greater the virulence, the more the pathogen can grow grow and therefore the greater the likelihood that it can cause disease including mortality of an infected host so those are the two things that that are typically expected to happen as a consequence of the pathogen evolving due to due to interventions such as vaccinations and one of the papers i will be discussing they provided a very interesting analogy that i wanted to share with you uh, which was uh, comparing that to Imagine a fish in a stream and where the fish is the virus, the stream is the immune pressure that is being imposed on a virus and then what can the fish do? One thing is they can get, and, and then imagine if you increase the current 
and that's basically increasing the pressure on the virus. So what can the fish do? It can get away from the current and go into calm water, so that would be equivalent to the immune escape. And the other thing that the fish could do is swim harder uh, against the current, and that would be equivalent to something like uh, like a incre virus increasing its growth rate. So uh, I thought that was a really really cute analogy, and I wanted to share that one with you. All right. So now, what about vaccine-induced immune escape with relation to COVID-19? I wanted to find uh, any information whether anyone actually was discussing this and myself I only managed to find two papers and that actually ever mentioned that in relation to COVID-19 vaccines and one of those papers was referencing the other that I will be discussing so in, rea in reality I only found one paper overall I found two papers that actually talked about the concept of vaccine induced immune escape and how vaccines might be um, influencing evolution of pathogens but they were talking doing studies in generalities in general terms so this was not specific to COVID-19 it was more with regards to any pathogen and any intervention any vaccine so and uh, we, we, and only one of them actually discussed the concept of of mentioning anything with relation to COVID-19 so this is not a topic that is addressed really at all with regards to COVID-19 vaccines so no one wants to address the elephant in the in the syringe <laughs> I should say elephant in the room and uh, uh, but let's see what these authors were were discovered all right so I'm going to talk about first the paper that did not mention anything with regards to COVID-19 what is interesting about that paper is that they wanted to study to study how pathogens could be evolving with relation to interventions such as vaccinations both in the context of the immune escape as well as increasing its pathogenicity which is rarely being studied mutually so they, what they wanted to do is to ooh, Mike got out what they wanted to do is to look at um, to look at um, what vaccines can promote type of evolution. So if we're talking about vaccines that actually target virulence of the pathogen, so its ability to grow, then such vaccines will promote either the immune escape or the evolution of the pathogen to be more virulent, but not both, so one or the other. So, what that really means is that in uh, terms of uh, scientific description, the, the authors call this negative epistasis, where the epistasis basically refers to um, synergistic relationship of two independent mutations working towards the same outcome. So that's what epistasis is. So if this effect has negative epistasis, what that means is that the mutation towards pathogenicity or mutations towards immune escape are not cooperating and it will be one or the other. In contrast, if you were to actually take a vaccine that targets infection or targets the ability of, uh, of uh, the virus to grow then and transmit, then in that case such vaccines will actually promote the evolution of the virus towards being both more pathogenic as well as the immune escape together in unison. So this would be positive epistasis. And that basically would be the most negative health outcome possible. And I thought this was interesting in relation to understanding potentially COVID-19 evolution of the virus. You can think of maybe how would this apply in context of something like, like the Delta variant or or uh, or the current even Omicron variant okay so I thought I, I would share that with you now we're gonna move to the second paper and what the authors mentioned specifically what they were worried about is potentially the idea that this virus could be evolving eventually down the road 
towards becoming more pathogenic. This is a very common worry in the scientific community at the moment, whether evolution could go in that way. And the authors of this particular study, both of these papers that I'm discussing, basically when they studied the viral evol evolution, they looked at mathematical computational modeling because that's the only way you can actually study, uh, study evolution of pathogens. And what the authors first mentioned is that if you look at the history of vaccines, and we're talking about almost 100 years of vaccination that, that we have now under the belt, uh, what happens is you never actually see really virus uh, evolving to become more pathogenic. Either it's never been, never been observed or never been reported. So one of those two. And so you can, uh, it's safe to say that based on the history you, it's not going to be likely that the virus is going to be evolved to be more pathogenic at least that was their their assumption but nevertheless recently something very strange happened and in a poultry industry and this was when billions of chickens around the world were vaccinated against Marek disease virus and they were vaccinated with vaccines that were not stopping in infection but rather they were, these vaccines what they were doing is they were actually preventing symptoms of the disease and the outcome of of that vaccination program turned out to be very strange and what happened is that the virus evolved to become more pathogenic more virulent and it actually ended up in fact causing more infections in the chickens afterwards and also become more deadly in uh, in the unvaccinated chickens so very dangerous outcome so dangerous that the authors claim that this definitely should be studied in greater detail so that we can understand how this could apply for for any vaccines in human use and based on their mathematical modeling and evolution they claim yes so there could be interventions that could cause such outcomes um, for vaccines but they're saying it's highly unlikely that they would be that you would observe this you would observe this with human vaccines and we're going to uh, get to that as well but first let's mention maybe uh, what would be the circumstances uh, that uh, you we could observe um, such more pathogenic evolution of the virus so number one it would be if you were actually using vaccines that again target the growth of the virus and in that case, what the authors expected would be happening is the virus would evolve to either become, either to develop to be, to cause immune escape, such as what we have observed with Omicron, or become more virulent, but not together. So they're actually repeating the same observation as to what the authors of the previous paper mentioned, mentioned as well. So what would happen in a, under such circumstance? Number one, if you're dealing with immune escape, then, then, then such a virus would have the same growth rate, whether or its original or the evolved virus would have the same growth rate in the unvaccinated host, but it would actually be more problematic in a vaccinated host. The alternative is that if the virus were to become more pathogenic, then what would happen is this would be more dangerous to the unvaccinated host because of the fact that now virus has a higher transmission rate can cause greater disease and then therefore unvaccinated hosts would have no protection and they would be more likely to suffer negative consequences now the second possibility of when virus could become more pathogenic get this is if you were to to experience something similar that was done with the with the Marek's disease vaccine in the chickens i.e. using vaccines that are not stopping infection of the virus and this is also similar to COVID-19 vaccines we know that from uh, we, we've known that from the start I know a lot of people think this is a new revelation but this has been known and understood from the beginning that these vaccines when they were uh, COVID-19 vaccines when they were developed they were not developed to stop infection between people they were developed to reduce this, the disease symptoms so that, that's not a surprise to anyone who's been studied this uh, from the start and and another thing is so if you use such vaccines and also if you vaccinate the majority of the population which is what happened with the in a poultry industry and it's just kind of similar what we're doing with COVID-19 vaccines then 
what you can do is you can cause evolution of the virus to become more virulent. Why? It's because if you vaccinate with such vaccines in a majority of the population, then you dramatically reduce the the likelihood of the vi or the need of the virus to actually pay the price of killing the host by becoming more transmissible. So if the virus becomes more transmissible, i.e. also more pathogenic, the, it, it increases the likelihood that such a virus could actually kill the host. But if you vaccinate the majority of people with such only symptom preventing vaccines, then you dramatically will reduce that, that, that outcome. And as a consequence, the virus has the freedom now to evolve to become more and more transmissible all the time and uh, and eventually because of that evolution such a virus can then reach a status where it can kill its host once again just like it was originally in the unvaccinated individuals except now this will be doing in, in vaccinated individuals but the consequences for the unvaccinated population under such circumstances will be quite dire according to the authors and the reason why is because now you have a much more pathogenic virus and people who have no protection at all will pay pay dire consequences and will be more likely to die now as i mentioned the authors think that should not happen with the human vaccines and here is why and the reason why they think this is unlikely is because it's already understood that that the these viruses um they adaptive immunity or basically antibodies is not the only way how the viruses are being cleared by by the body in fact that comes late first and before that happens it's our innate immunity as well as limited re limitation of resources available to the virus before it grows will actually start limiting its ability to to grow and therefore it's very difficult for the virus to actually evolve against that and as a consequence it's not as likely that it will be able to evolve its pathogenicity and that's why the authors claim that this is not likely to to be seen but uh, here we are this is some a uh, couple of publications they're both recent they're both in uh, were studied in 2022 that actually looked at looked at evolution of viruses in context of vaccines and how vaccines could be inducing immune escape now it's only the second paper that mentioned that uh, anything with related to COVID. they authors mentioned that it would be unlikely unlikely to ever know if vaccines actually did cause immune escape or evolution of the pathogen to become more pathogenic to actually understand that vaccines cause that because you would not be able to separate that information from understanding whether this was caused by any other factors as well but if the if vaccines were to do it it's more likely that vaccines COVID-19 vaccines would cause the immune escape um, then something like natural immunity and this is the only reference that i found so far um, in any of the publications that suggested that covid 19 vaccines could be inducing immune escape so as you can see it's not a topic that anyone really wants to d discuss at the moment but it is being studied in terms of how interventions could be could be influencing evolution okay so i thought i would share that with you and and uh and let me know what you think i know this is a complicated topic and and uh it's only being scratched at the surface at the moment because it's still not a <laughs> not a popular topic of investigation so that's all i have for you today because it's a longer video please check out my other videos in terms of in finding information about the events we have and uh, we do have another event coming up for covid 19 q a and so please check it out and also just wanted to say thank you for everyone for all the questions and and all the donations and uh and all the good stuff that uh, you're helping us grow. Okay, bye everyone for now, ciao.